Yeah, I actually have it. Is this also 5 to 7? Yes. Thank you. Ice breaking. Wow. Yeah. Two amazing. Yeah. Excuse me? I have it on my phone, that's right. Okay, you can read it off my phone, that's all right. Okay, you know. Our third speaker is Kurt, as if we didn't know. But I didn't get his intro. <laughs> okay. And uh, the intro in a five year journey of studying, reading, and exploring the whole concept of motivation, Kurt realizes that staying motivated is impossible. <laughs> Doing the icebreaker speech on his CC manual. Doing it all over again. Kurt Foston, the express, uh, uh, ex, ex motivational speaker. Well, guys, deep into the moment where he was failed by the idea of motivation. Thank you. Well, okay. I'm motivated in listening. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Austin. Well, motivation, well, it, it sucks, to be honest with you. It will fail you just like it failed me. To be honest with you, if I heard that saying, or someone saying that, just about a year ago, I would think it was blasphemy. I would think the person is a rantable. <laughs> <laughs> I quit my nine to five job to pursue the idea of becoming a motivational speaker. So how could someone tell me that it's going to fail me? just doesn't make sense. You see, the way that this motivational industry is constructed, the way that it's marketed, it currently works on you have a dream or a goal, and they try to persuade your emotions to make you feel good about chasing this dream or goal. And trust me, there's a whole legion of people just like me. I used to wake up listening to my motivational mixtapes, my songs, my YouTube videos, listening to great motivational music, but then something happened. Let me paint this picture, right? I was volunteering at a drug rehab center like I usually do, and this room, the room was about half this size. The lights wasn't as bright as this, so it was a little bit dim, and it was a men's group of 20 men in there. They all were sitting there looking at me. And I promise you, I was doing my greatest rendition of Zig Ziglar mixed with Hulk Hogan. <laughs> I was in there intense, passionate, as you would say, giving all the cliche motivational quotes you could think of. Be the change you wish to see, mm. or the only limit of life is you. I thought I had them. They are all sitting at the edge of their seats, their pupils getting all big, they're smiling ear to ear, just like a first grader seeing an ice cream truck. <laughs> I knew I had them. Then off to the left, way in the back, this man by the name of Sam, he timidly raised his hand. I quickly pointed to him, thinking he was going to chime in and join the group. He looked at me and said, Kurt, he had a very deep voice, Jamaican accent, how can motivation help? What do you mean? How can it help me? I really want to believe in this. I thought, all right, well, what's your story? He goes, 12 years ago, I was with my best friend, and a drug deal just went wrong. Okay. You see, we were shot at during a setup. The bullet missed me, though, and hit my best friend in the head. He provided chilling details of holding his best friend as he was gasping for his last air as the blood was smeared on him, I don't have to go into any more details. And I sat there and I looked at him and he looked at me as everyone in the room, their jaw was dropped. And I don't know if you've ever been in that position where you open your mouth, but nothing comes out. My voice was a little bit shaky. I didn't know what to say. And he continued, he looked at me and said, well, I, I see you're speechless right now, but drinking helps numb the memory. Drinking allows me to sleep at night. Drinking, to be honest, 
and silence the last words I heard from him. So please tell me, how will motivation help? I was stumped. Just picture a seven-year-old kid, completely different. Picture a seven-year-old kid on Christmas Eve running downstairs and seeing mommy and daddy eating cookies while writing from Santa on a gift. I was shattered. I'm saying five years of studying, five years of pursuing this idea of motivational speaking, five years of literally spending over $30,000 off this goals and dreams of being on stage. It all quickly went away while listening to Sam. All done. You see, anyone who has a dream or goal, it's not going to feel good while you're pursuing it. It's impossible. Think of some of the most historic figures in life. Think of uh, Gandhi. You think it felt good for him to practice nonviolence in a violent society? Think of Nelson Mandela. An innocent man in jail for 27 years. Do you think that felt good? Or how about Martin Luther King, the leader of the civil rights movement? He received on average 30 death threats a day, stabbed in the chest twice, his house was firebombed with his family inside. You think that felt good? Even once this man died in his early 40s or late 30s, the doctors looked at his heart and said he has a heart of a 60-year-old man. They didn't know how he lived that long. There's nothing that feels good about pursuing your dreams and your goals. And it was these people, these examples, despite them not feeling good, that's what makes them great. You see, there's going to be moments when you are chasing your dreams and goals. You're not going to want to wake up early to study. Or you might not want to stay up late writing an extra article if you want to be a writer. There's going to be moments where life just does not make sense. But despite how you feel, you still go along and chase that journey of becoming great. So as I looked at Sam, not knowing what to say, I was honest with him. I said, well, motivation will not work. It won't work for you. And to be honest, I don't think it worked for me. It's a lie. It failed. But together, we came to the conclusion that having a relationship with your dreams is far more important than trying to stay motivated. Having an intimate, a day-to-day, -day, a thriving relationship with your dreams, one that is pursued, sought daily, one that's chased upon, one that is sought after despite how you feel, will allow you to chase your goals and become whatever it is you're destined to become. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, motivation will fail you just like it failed me and unfortunately just like it failed Sam. But thankfully now, he quit drinking as he now has a goal that's bigger than himself. Thank you. Considering you just live in an icebreaker, I'd like to present you with an icebreaker ribbon. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>